Welcome back. We are going to look at a new video. And this video is about some applications of congruences. There are different applications we can consider. And we start looking at those congruences. What can we do with the congruences that we defined before? Because we didn't define them just for fun. We define them because they are important in number theory and therefore important in computer science. Now, like I said, congruences have a lot of possible applications in computer science. And in this series of videos, we will look deeper into some of these applications. What are those applications? Well, we have uh, hashing functions, which allocate computer memory space to data. We look at pseudo random numbers and check digits. Like I said, uh, hashing functions are used to allocate memory. They make sure that data are stored very quickly in a specific location and that we can find them back very easily too. The pseudo random numbers are very important when we look at randomized algorithms. We already spoke or you already heard about random numbers in statistics. And in fact, the random numbers are characterized by the fact that all of them has the same probability. So when you're playing, for example, roulette, all the numbers on the roulette wheel or the little wheel, what roulette final, finally means, have the same probability of occurrence. The same happens with dice. The dice are specially made so that none of the numbers have a higher probability of occurring. If it would be that a dice is not perfect or sometimes people try to um, cheat and make one side heavier to have different numbers all the time. Uh, the same thing with the roulette, you have to be careful. And in the casinos, the roulette wheels are replaced regularly to be sure that they're balanced well. If they're out of balance, you may find that certain numbers have a higher probability and that means that they are not random anymore. A last application of congruences that we will consider in these videos are in fact check digits. Check digits are uh, digits in teachers that are used to verify if a series of numbers complies with specific rules. We can find those in barcodes. When you go to the shop, you find the barcode number on different products, uh, typically in EAN 13, 13 numbers, or an EAN8, and those barcodes contain information about the product, about the company. But the last number is what we call a check digit. We also have ISBN numbers like you have them on books, and we also have bank account numbers. The last number of your bank account is basically a verification to see that the numbers that have been transmitted are correct. So basically what happens if you make an error on your bank account number, the check digit will identify that error and will tell you that your bank account is not correct. So basically it's very important or when you already had the error, uh, it's to make sure that you put in the right bank account number in that case. Now we are looking we will be looking at all these elements and in this video we are looking at the hashing function. Now the hashing function is very interesting in computer science because in many applications we have to need we have the need to store and retrieve data very quickly. So we have to find a place where are we going to store that information. Now, an example what we can identify with very easily is our personal ID number, what we have, for example, in Europe. In USA, people have a social security number, and in every country today, people have a certain number that links them to the social system. So basically, that number can be used to store the data in some locations. Now, when we look at the hashing function, so we have, in fact, 
a unique key for every individual. The social security number or the personal ID are in fact unique numbers for a specific person. Uh, for example, the European ID typically starts with the year of birth, the month and the day, and then you have some additional numbers at the end. Of course, you may have more people being born at the same day, so you have the possibility to distinguish between them that the additional numbers there, the additional numbers make the number unique for you. Now, we can define different uh, hashing functions. We can find out functions that are in fact uh, special designed for this. And we also know that a popular function is, for example, the hashing function of k is k modulus m. In this uh, expression, m is the number of available memory locations and k is in fact the personal ID or the social security number. So basically, just by putting that number in there, we will find the location where we can put the data. Now, let's have an example, an application. We have two uh, IDs. So we have somebody born on in 1978, the 3rd of May, uh, sorry, on March, 14th of March, and the additional numbers are 85775. We have another person born in 1969 on May 1st, uh, sorry, 13th, and we also have the additional five numbers to make this a personal ID. So this number may exist or may not exist. I just invented them. Now, what we can do is we want to get the memory locations for these two files. And we consider here in our application that we have 115 memory positions available. In reality, there can be more positions and we will see what this gives as a result. So when we calculate the hashing func function of 7803148775, we calculate the modulus 115 of this, so we divide that number by 115 and we look at the remainder and the remainder is 105. So basically this number, this data, will be stored in location 105. We do the same for 69051358. 999. Nine. We calculate the modulus 115 of this number and we see that we have the memory location 114. Now we are lucky we have two different memory locations. Now this is very important to see because we can only store one number in each memory location. Now the function, the hashing function is an onto function because all existing memory, memory locations should be possible. So everything goes to the possible memory locations that we have. Now, once we look at this, we also have to say that it's a not a one-to-one -one function. And we may have different personal IDs that may be allocated to the same location. Now, that is basically a problem. That is not possible. And then we have to find a solution what to do with that information, where to store this data at that coincidence. Now, let's have a look at resolving collisions. Now, a collision is basically when the hashing function allocates the same memory location to different social security numbers or personal ID. So both of these numbers would end up or be, would be assigned to the same location. Now, the first one served will be stored. So basically what we find out, we get another ID, and that ID is allocated to a memory location that is already occupied, and that's not possible. Now, we have to look at this and we have to find specific procedures. What do we have to do if this happens? Now, one possibility is to assign 
the information to the next three locations. So we just move to the next location and so on until we find a free location. And when that location is free, basically we have in fact all the different possibilities. We will fill up that location. And once we have the same problem, we will do the same thing. Now, another possibility is using a linear probing function. And the linear probing function is of the form H, K, and I. And H, K is in fact the hashing function. And we add I modulus N. And M uh, or I is between 0 and N minus 1, both included. So it means when we look at the different values of I, we can say we have on the actual location. So when this is zero, uh, no problem, we put a number there. On the other hand, we can go to one, two, three, four, five, so we can add more spaces to that location. Now, we calculate the value of the hashing function and add E modulus M. And those values are basically zero, one, two, three, up to M minus one. And then we put it in the position. Now, we find basically additional locations. And for each location, we have to evaluate, is this location free or not? So basically, we continue storing the information or finding a location until we find a location that is free. Now, that was about the hashing function. Now, there are other elements that we can look into. There are different ways to use the hashing function. We just talked about the principle. But another thing which is very important in number theory and for computer programming is what we call pseudo-random numbers. We know about random numbers. But now we're going to look at pseudo random numbers. So that was it for this video. We will continue in the next video. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you and bye bye. <laughs>